Alright, so um, I've been promising to do this video for a few of you for a very long time and I keep forgetting and I keep seeing this issue cropping up, uh, cropping up a, a few places. This video looks at um, something that I was taught while I was at Rygate studying under Gaina, Goff and Gerald Minot. Now Gaina taught us this. I, I had no need for it because I have never ever had a death grip on my pencil or my pen. I've never squeezed the pen staff that hard. I see some people writing and they have pressions in their, on their index, on their middle finger because they're pressing so hard that they've actually left a mark there. I've seen people who have calluses in that spot. I've never really had this problem. Um, but I was very fortunate to learn how to cope with it for teaching purposes. So one of the things I, I do when I'm dealing with this kind of problem is I always refer the students to a few issues which they need to solve first. Obviously, you know that there are three videos which I've done on YouTube, posture, placement, and position. Those videos are really critical because, of course, if you're not sitting in the right place, if your posture isn't good enough, you're going to be hunched over the work, which means you're probably going to be gripping the tool quite tightly. Sit up. Please look at the videos. Uh, they, they will really help you gain a better understanding of how to sit and how to approach your writing, where to place the page. All of these things influence actually how you hold the tool. So let's, uh, let's assume that you know how to sit. One of the, the biggest problems with holding a tool is how you hold the tool. Now, the video is quite far away so that you can see how I'm sitting, where the page is. Um, I'm not really going to zoom in because you need to see what's happening with both hands and it's, it's quite difficult to, to do that as a, as a full sort of video. I'm working on the assumption based that you're using a triangular hold, which is that. If you do this, you're clearly going to have a problem with your death grip because that means you, you're really going to be squeezing. I see some people writing and their index finger is curled that much. That is not good. The only thing that will do is cause damage to your hand and cause problems later on when you start writing for longer hours. So just be really careful with this. There are lots of ways to fix those issues, but let's look specifically at the death grip and squeezing the tool too hard. Now, one of the things Gina taught us, which is excellent information for the, the death grip, is to take a pencil with an eraser on the backside. So this has an eraser on the back side. What you want to do is you want to hold the pencil in the non-writing hand. So obviously if you're right-handed, hold it in the left hand. If you're left-handed, hold it in the right hand. And you want to place the eraser of the pencil just over where you're writing. So as you're writing, so if I'm going to do copy plate script, and I generally work, nearly parallel to the table. So I'm writing uphill. Uh, it's a little un uh, uncomfortable for me to do this because I, I don't usually, I don't need this. So, you know, it is something that you're going to have to practice with. Take the pencil with the eraser, place the eraser over the area where you're going to write. So let's aim for the middle there. And what the pencil does is it holds the page in place and then you can write this way. What that does is it transfers some of the tension in the writing hand to the non-writing hand. And the pencil, the erase on the pencil, acts as a shock absorber so that the hand is, even though the hand's shaking, because obviously you're pressing so hard that you could snap the pencil in half, even though your hand is shaking, the eraser is absorbing that tremor. So the whole page isn't shaking all over the place and it's, it's held firmly in place. I've worked with a few different variations of this hold. Uh, some of them are a little bit more fiddly than others. Um, one of the things, instead of holding the tool like this and resting it like so, you want to hold it a little bit more open and rest it down and flat, so it's like this. So you rest it down and flat. And what that does is it, it, it somehow translates the tension 
backwards and downwards. So you're also holding the page with the ring finger and the little finger. And you can quite comfortably write without too much movement. One of the other things I get students to do is to use a longer sheet of paper and to use it um, landscape rather than portrait and either thumb tack it down to the desk and hold with the, the pencil in place so that the page doesn't move about too much. This is slightly problematic because it means the page can't move very easily and you have lots of other issues to cope with. Um, but this is one of the best ways to translate tension from one hand to the next. It's not an overnight ish, it's not an overnight solution. It doesn't happen in 10 minutes. It will not happen in 30 minutes. It will not even happen in a day. But as soon as you do it, you will see a, a, a noticeable difference between the delicacy of the writing and the lack of tension in the writing hand. The only problem is you have to be conscious of it because you're going to put the pencil down, you're going to forget that you're supposed to be using the pencil because it's not something you're accustomed to doing. So you really have to keep at it constantly. Eventually, you know, if you keep doing it constantly over the course of you know, a month or two, you will find that you've lightened the grip on the tool and you, you won't need to use the pencil anymore. Now, the other way around this is to take a piece of paper. I have two pieces because I have large hands. Take a piece of paper and scrunch it up into a ball and hold that inside of the palm of the non-writing hand. And what you want to do is you want to hold it and press it, but you want to squeeze this. So it means squeezing it into a fist and resting your hand on the page like so. So not only do you have the tension inside of the wrist, inside of the hand, you also have the tension on the hand, on the table. So there's, there's, there's two ways to dissipate that sort of tension that you have with the writing hand. Um, I find holding the page at the top, so over, so, I, so if this is the page here, I'm actually going to go over to the end of the, of the sheet, onto the right side, so I'm actually holding the page down with my hand and squeezing. I, I find students struggle with this a little bit more than with the pencil because they have to hold this, they have to hold the page down. And if, if you haven't corrected your posture, you're really going to run into a problem with this. Because if you, if you sit like this, look at where my hand is. My hand is, my, my, um, my wrist is vertical instead of horizontal. So if you, you know, if you're like this, you're so close to the work that you're squeezing your shoulders, you're squeezing your neck, you're squeezing your fingers, you're squeezing the tool. Sit up, relax, roll the shoulders back and down, chest up. Inhale, lean forward from the hip. Notice I'm not leaning forward from the shoulders, lean forward from the hip. From here, lean forward from here. Put this down and right leaning to the the left side if you're right-handed because if you are leaning on the writing hand that's also going to cause you to get tension on the, on the writing implement so it could be a brush a brush pen uh, it could be a brush it could be a broad edge nib it could be a pointed nib it could be a ruling pen so just be really conscious of how you're sitting uh, how you're breathing um, and uh, which one of those two you're going to use might want to try both of both of them just in case because you know you obviously have so many problems. <laughs> anyway, um, so I hope that helps some of you or a lot of you, um, and I hope it helps you a little bit with lightness of touch. I do have something else that I use that I developed to help with delicacy of touch, which I call the lift, uh, which I'll probably look at in another video, seeing that we're all stuck at home for a long time. Okay, have a good one.